Now, the next article is entitled, The Gulf Blue Plague is Evolving. This is actually part two. And the reason I'm not reading part one is I've already covered a lot of the stuff, I believe, in part one. Um, but this is uh, another... This source is worldvisionportal.org. It's by Michael Edward. He goes on to say, if you haven't read the, the Gulf Blue Plague is Evolving or Gulf Oil Dispersant Corrects It is 11 Times More Lethal Than Oil, you should do so now in order to better understand what's being presented here. Well, again, I've covered a lot of that material. Both articles, along with others related to the Gulf Time Bomb, Biological Disaster, can be found. And I give you all the links here if you want to explore this further. Without a doubt, the Gulf Blue Plague is evolving biologically, as you will see factually from data set before you here. In all probability, this is the primary reason the mainstream media has been silenced, especially with regards to local media outlets along the Gulf Coast. The Gulf of Mexico is a biological time bomb that is undoubtedly evolving into a chemically induced breeding ground for mutating viruses. All the aspects exist in the Gulf right now and have been established over the last three months. Their ongoing manipulated evolution into a viral plague or viral epidemic is yet is evident, yet has been totally ignored. So, going further, the most prevalent ingredient in the Corexit is 2-butylethanol. This compound chemical is especially toxic to the blood, kidneys, liver, and central nervous system of all mammals, including porpoises, whales, and humans. Corexit also ruptures red blood cells, and of by itself it can cause cancer and birth defects. Oil mixed with Corexit is 11 times more lethal than the oil alone. The EPA eventually conceded that Corexit is a deadly toxic brew for 50% of any group of test animals that comes in contact with it. It's really 100% lethal. I mean, if, you, if you're exposed to enough of it. Yet, despite the obvious inherent dangers of Corexit, it's being sprayed nightly by boats and aircraft in a foolish attempt to disperse the surface oil and continue with the ruse that the northern Gulf of Mexico is nothing to be concerned about any longer. The problem with using Corexit, especially in the insane amounts that have already been implied, is that it has never been tested in such massive quantities. It has never been tested for use on fragile ecosystem marshes. It has never been tested for depths below 1,000 meters. And it has never been tested for use with large quantities of bacteria, such as exist in great quantities in the Gulf of Mexico. Gulf fishermen and shrimpers are now speaking out about how they have sighted graveyards of birds, fish, dolphins, and whale corpses floating on the surface, which are secretly being removed during the night by unknown third-party contracted vessels. Now, I've reported on this extensively in the past. It's a big cover-up at this point. It's all it is. Chris Pinatek, a marine biologist and campaigner with the Sea Turtle Restoration Project, confirmed what Steve and others had told me. The Coast Guard planes were flying out at night, spraying Corexit on the water and the land. They, they said, he said, people need to realize that their water, the air, the sand they're walking on... Uh, the things they are touching when they wake up in the morning are coated with this stuff. We are producing an experiment in the Gulf, the likes of which no one has ever seen. Top scientists admit that we are part of this experiment, the, the humans. Uh, Dr. Cake, along with the commercial fishermen and Gulf Coast environmentalists, are drawing direct parallels to BP's oil disaster and the use of toxic dispersants as the likely cause of the increased number of fish kills they are witnessing. There are several parallels to the spill, Dr. Cake added. We have evidence from fishermen operating in their, they're called the Vessels of Opportunity Fleet, and fishermen in the immediate area who observed the spraying of dispersants by both aircraft and vessels in the immediate vicinity of fish kills. Therein lies one triggering mechanism. But far more important is that Corexit is a mutagen when in the presence of bacteria, for which the Gulf of Mexico is a primary aquatic source. Very few people understand what a virus is or how it evolved. Now, I tried to simplify this. This got kind of technical here. I tried to simplify this so people could understand the concept here. So just kind of bear with me here. In the same respect, most don't comprehend what bacteria are, nor do they grasp what a cellular mutation is. Bacteria are a large group of single-cell microorganisms that grow to a fixed size and then pre reproduce through a form of asexual reproduction, meaning they can produce essentially by themselves. Um, under optimal conditions, bacteria can grow and divide rapidly. 
and some bacterial populations can double as quickly as every 9.8 minutes. Most bacteria inherit identical copies of their parents' genes, meaning they clone themselves. However, all bacteria can evolve through changes made in their genetic material DNA caused by mutations. Mutations come from errors made during replication or cloning of themselves of the DNA or from exposure to mutagens such as certain chemicals like Corexit. So in other words, we got this, all these tons of bacteria in the Gulf and they're being exposed to this mutagen that's, that's going to create this mutant-like bacteria in the Gulf. Despite their apparent simplicity, bacteria can also form complex associations with other organisms. If bacteria form a parasitic association, they are classified as pathogens. Pathogenic bacteria are a major cause of death and human disease. Not all bacteria are bad, as some are actually good for humans. Of the 400 types of bacteria that live in the human digestive system, many are considered good bacteria. Those are the things like acidophilus and bifidus and those types of things you can take to populate your intestinal tract. The modern word virus comes from the same Latin word which refers to poison and other noxious substances. Essentially, a virus is a poison, an imported toxic or an imported toxic body. The origins of viruses are always conceived at a cellular level during their onset of existence. In the early 20th century, an English bacteriologist named Frederick Twork discovered a certain group of viruses that infect bacteria. These particular virally infected bacteria are now called bacteria bacteriophages, or simply phages. Bacteriophages are common in diverse group of viruses and are most abundant form of biological entity in aquatic environments, which would be like the Gulf. There are up to 10 times more of these viruses in the oceans than there are bacteria.